Hi guys and welcome to today's video. Today it is now 2024 and I thought there's no better way really for my first video to go through what I think and put on for makeup what I thought was the best of Chanel 2023. To be honest, I think nearly everything I got last year I really enjoyed, but there are just a few standout ones for me and ones that I reach for more than others. But there weren't any really duds. There might have been, well not really a dud, but something that I don't reach for very much and I will chat about that. So I will be putting on some makeup and also, and the makeup that I'm gonna put on that is what I think was the best and the ones that I reach for the most. But I'll also go through what I purchased throughout the year as well and just give you my thoughts on each item. Now I've done my skincare for the morning, the last step being sunscreen. I haven't put on primer yet. Now last year Chanel came out with two, well there was the number one D Chanel that was sort of a primer that skin enhancer as well. I don't really classify that as a primer, but the two primers were the La Beiges, the Healthy Glow, and that was in, I think it was Rosy or Rosy Beige, something like that. I do have that in front of me, and that was in Rosy Beige. Now, this is the one that wasn't ever released in the US. I mean, it may still come to the United States, and I hope that it does. It is really beautiful. This was a limited edition when it came out. I'm hoping that Chanel will make this a permanent product, and you can see how much I've used in it. There's a big dip in there. I'm not going to use it today because you can't purchase it, and most of my subscribers are from the United States, and you can't purchase this. But the other primer that they released, and that was the Mattifying Primer, and I'm just going to grab that now, and this is the Mattifying one. And when it says Mattifying, it's not like this flat matte. I use this a lot. I'm not quite sure how much I've got left in here. I would say there's probably about that much product left. It's definitely a primer that I reach for a lot. It is summer here now in New Zealand, so the temperatures are very warm. It hasn't been, we had a couple of weeks, and that was around Christmas time, and it was just so humid. <laughs> it was really awful, but that humidity has now gone to some degree, which is really good. And doing the videos in the summer, I have windows next to me here and I can open them up, but I don't really get that wind flow and I don't have air con in this room. So this year I decided to get a small fan to sit on my table in front of me. Now I haven't got it switched on yet, but I may do just a little bit further in the video once the room starts getting warm because it's about, what is the time here? It's 20 past nine in the morning, but you add the lights that I have in front of me here and it does really start to heat up. Now there weren't any new foundations for 2023 from Chanel, but I did buy at least, I think, one as a tester. So I won't mention that one yet. I'm still testing that one out. I do really like it. But I did pick up, and that was towards the end of last year, two Chanel foundations. And one was the Sublimage Le Essence de Tint, this comes with a brush and this is a really glowy foundation. And the other one that's been around for quite a long time now, and that's the Chanel, the Vita Lumia Aqua. So out of the two today, I'm actually going to put on this one. I did try this one the other day when it was quite humid and I can wear it during the summer with my oily skin and the humid weather, but I do have to put on quite a lot of powder. Whereas this one isn't quite as glowy as that Sublimage and this also gives a really beautiful finish. So that's the one that I'm gonna put on today. And I'm gonna put it on using a Chanel brush because I think it's worth talking about those beautiful Chanel sets that came out. The other ones in the background behind me here, I got the one in yellow and I also got one in 
a green as well and there was the mirror the nail file and then the brushes that came in that case that you can see so one of the brushes that came with that set was the fluid foundation brush or fluid or powder foundation brush and it is the 101 so i'm going to use that today to pop on the foundation so it does have a smaller brush head to put on the foundation but I don't mind sort of taking my time putting on foundation. I do like to stipple it in. And where I find this brush really good, and that's with the Chanel, the Le Beiges, the Waterfresh foundation, I think these brushes are really good for that. And the other thing that I think is really worth mentioning that Chanel released last year, and that was a reformulated product, and that was the nail polishes. And I've got two different shades on today. I've got with the initial release with Reformulated, this is the white one. I will have everything listed below, anything that's still available anyway. And this was the Christmas shade. Now, why I like this reformulation is that the brush is a bit longer and a little bit wider. So that makes putting on the nail polish just that much easier. And I also find that they dry quicker as well. I've spoken about it before in other videos. So what I do is I put on the base product and then it takes two or three minutes to dry. And then I put on the first coat and I wait 10 minutes. And then I put on my second coat and I find after about 20 minutes it has cured. And what I mean by cured is that I can go about and do my usual things without it peeling back or hasn't quite set and then you ruin your nail polish whereas the older formula I found that I really to get it to really the cured stage I found that I had to let it sit at least 30 if not 40 to 45 minutes so I do appreciate it that they do set that that little bit quicker and I can get on just doing <laughs> my normal normal things around the house. And I also find that it doesn't chip that easily. Now it does depend what I'm doing in the winter time when I'm bringing in firewood and things like that. It's not bulletproof this nail polish. It is going to chip if I'm not really careful. And at the moment I've got my newfoundland puppy. So doing different things with him. And I do find that it is wearing a bit quicker. But if you haven't got a new puppy to deal with and you're not dealing with firewood or anything like that, then I find the lasting power of these nail polishes really, really good. So I've now put on some concealer, just did my eyebrows and also put on some eyeshadow primer as well. Now before I forget, I do want to briefly mention the number one de Chanel and these were the skin enhancers. I got ones and let's have a look soft pink and the other one was in medium coral now i did a dedicated video on this and in the video i put i think it might have been soft pink i can't remember i put that underneath foundation i didn't like it with my oily skin underneath foundation it has it's sort of hard to describe but it's almost like it goes it gives beyond a glow with my oily skin. It's sort of like almost a bit metallic-y looking and just too much. But these do make a beautiful highlighter. Now, I did try because someone suggested after I did that video in the comments to, because I thought this was a little bit light, this was a little bit dark, and to mix them together. And I did try that and just wearing it on its own, but I didn't like the look of that either. Now, there's people that have normal to dry skin that really like these and they do look really beautiful on. It's just with me, I just find, and it could be, like I said, my oily skin, I just find they emphasize texture a bit. And I just mean they emphasize texture wearing it on my own or underneath the foundation. But used as a highlighter just around here, then I do think this is a really lovely product. But if you're just going to use it as a highlighter, then they do come in quite a big bottle and it would take a long time to get through. So not that it was a fail for me, but certainly not a favorite and just not one that 
I tend to reach for. Chanel also came out with last year the Travel Size, the LeBeige's Healthy Glow. These were the bronzers. I picked up all three shades. I really like the formula of these. These were small and in the Travel Size. I'm not too sure whether these are still available or not. And at the time that these came out, it was also quite hard to get the bigger size in the Chanel bronzers as well. So I'm not sure whether they're going to be reformulating the bigger size. I actually prefer, there's some people that prefer the original ones. I actually prefer the formula of these. I just think they go on just that little bit better. I really like the other ones and I still use them. It's just that I find that this is just, goes on just that little bit more smoother on my skin so the one that I'm going to use today this is the one in tan medium bronze and I'm just going to use the Sonia G the buffer brush to put them on I find these go on really well I mean you can put them on using your fingers if you want but I either tend to use this brush here or I also use a beauty blender as well and either way I think they go on really really beautifully this is the shade that I tend to use the most often in winter I reach for the lighter shade and I sort of do a mixture of both of these and there are other times that I just use the deepest one as well my skin is sort of my skin tone is it's a light towards medium more towards medium neutral so that's probably why I can wear all three shades but I do tend to just go for this one probably reach for this one the most I'm just going to powder my face using the Chanel the natural finish loose powder I did use up the one in is it 30 or B30 and I had forgotten that I actually do have one and this is in translucent so that's the one that I have been using I do want to pick up another one in the shade 30 but for now this one is absolutely fine and I do find with my oily skin that this is probably probably the best powder that I have I wish they would put this out actually in a pressed powder form because then I would get both use this while I'm putting on my makeup at home and then I'd probably take if they had a pressed powder of this i just pop it into my small makeup bag. It's my bag. It'd be great for just touch-ups if I was out during the day. But it is a really beautiful powder. So earlier in the year, last year, they came out with the LeBlanc collection. And this was a Delice eyeshadow quad. And I thought this was really beautiful. This is the one that had the pastels in it. And I think this is super pretty. I'm not quite sure whether this is still available or not. If it is, like I said, in everything that I'm putting on my face today, I will have linked below. But I think this is absolutely gorgeous. And my favourite shade out of this whole one is this lavender shade here. It is really, really pretty. But probably not my favourite one for the year. Now, Chanel, just recently for the holidays, they also came out with this eyeshadow quint. And I think this is gorgeous. Out of all the shades in here, I absolutely adore this shade here. And a little bit of this one as well in the inner corner, just to lighten things up and give a little bit of a sparkle. This is more of a creamy formula. It goes on beautifully and... I really like this color story. I think it is absolutely gorgeous. But the ones that I reach for the most, and one is going to be an unpopular opinion, but I absolutely love it. And those are the Chanel, the loose powders that came out. A lot of people thought they were messy and you had a lot of fallout. I don't get that at all and I love mixing it together in particular that Chanel also came out with the those Byzance quads I think there were three or four of them and I reviewed those and there's a couple of those quads I used the loose eyeshadow and then one shade from the quads so today I'm going to be using the Ombre's Byzance quad and this is in the one Cristal. I'll just take out the couple of brushes 
today I'm going to be using this shade here and I'm going to use one of the loose eyeshadows this is the darkest one and has a little bit of that purple in it as well you mix this with this shade here and it just looks absolutely gorgeous now I've shown people before with this so I just give this a shake open it up tap off the excess like that and then I just press it along there and from there I just pop some on the outer corner and I'll pop some on this side as well now I might add a little bit more but to begin with I'm just going to start with that much and then I'm going to blend it out and often what I do is I just leave this open and just have it in front of me I don't need to get any more there's still quite a lot of pigment on that little sponge and I'm going to use one of the Chanel brushes I'm going to use the dual ended the 200 and this is more of the fluffier side and I'm going to blend this out I find these eyeshadows actually very easy to use. I love it how they last on my lids. Now I have oily skin, but I do use an eyeshadow primer. And today I use the NARS one. And I do have to use a primer because with my oily skin, there's no eyeshadow that would last. But I think these just last absolutely beautifully. Now I'm just going to take... What I do is with a sponge, just going to take a little bit more. Just put the lightest amount just over the rest of my lid as well. But I love this colour. I think it is absolutely beautiful. Then I'm just going to take my other Chanel brush. Grab some pigment off the sponge. And I'm going to run that under my lower lash line. Then I'm going to go into this quad here and into this shade and I'm going to put that through here. So I've just put some eyeliner on and some mascara. It was a Chanel eyeliner but it wasn't a Chanel mascara. One of my favourite mascaras is a Chanel one. It's the La Volume. But I've got about in front of me there's two or three mascaras that I really just want to use and get the most out of before I open up another Chanel La Volume. Now also last year they came out with those oversized the eyeshadow and blush quads. So there was this one, and this was called Tendris. So this was Tendris, and I actually wore this the other day, and I think it is really pretty. I think I did a video on that one, but I don't think I ever did a video on this one. And the other one is Caractea, I think that's how you say it. And it's this one here. Or did I wear this one the other day? I might have, and I might have just stuck to these two shades here. And this one this is a really beautiful shade on the eyes and it's also really lovely as a highlighter as well there was a lot of people that didn't like these they didn't like they thought it was too red they didn't really like the formula I really had no issues with the formula I think they are really lovely and I'm happy that I've got them in my collection they're just not ones that I reach for as much as some of the other products that were released last year. So hopefully you can't hear it, but you'll see because my hair's blowing around a bit that I have now put on the fan in front of me and it makes such a huge difference. It just helps keep my face really nice and cool. So now let's talk about, we've got highlighters and blushes. There were a lot of blushes for Chanel and also highlighters as well. Now, the one that came out, the first blush that came out, and that was with that Delice the Pastel Quad, and that was the, I'll just find it here in front of me, 
And that was the Fantasy de Chanel. I also bought a backup of this. I've used this quite a bit. I think this is really beautiful. I want to use this today, but then I also want to use one of the other blushes as well. Maybe I might use them both. And then in the fall, there were the Dossier, the Equinox, the two blushes. I still have them. <laughs> in the boxes that they came in i've talked about this before sometimes i keep them for ages doesn't mean i don't use them i do it's just if i really like the packaging that it's coming then sometimes i just keep them but it probably is due now to throw that packaging out so the first one they did come with a little half moon brush in them as well and this one is mauve and I'll show you the other one in a minute. The other one was but the beige coral. And out of the two, this is the one that I prefer. This is the one that I'm going to use today because I think it goes beautifully with this eyeshadow look. And then I could probably put a little bit of that fantasy over the top as well. I haven't done that before, but I think that could look really pretty. And then I'm going to have to decide which highlighter that I'm going to use as well. So I'm just going to open up the beige coral one. I think that this is really lovely. It's just that I tend to reach just for that mauve one, just that little bit more than this one. But both of these are just absolutely stunning. But today I'm going to put on the mauve one. Now I don't want to get too carried away if I'm going to put on <laughs> that fantasy blush as well. So I'm going to use the Chanel. This is the blush brush. This is the, one of the ones that came in those sets as well. And I'm just going to put on just a little bit. I really love these blushes, particularly this shade. I think it is absolutely gorgeous. And what I do is I just tap my brush in very lightly and just, just slowly build it up. But it really is beautiful. And the embossing on these, I'll just hold this up. The embossing on them is just absolutely stunning. So I've just wiped down this brush and picked up this one and I'm just going to add a little bit, I think, just to just to the apple of my cheeks through there. I think it could look really pretty, either that or it could be a disaster. But if I just go fairly lightly, I think it could look really pretty. And yeah, together they... That's actually a really, really lovely combination. Really pretty. So really beautiful blushes. Really, really gorgeous. So let's have a look at the different highlighters that came out this year. So with the holiday, there was the Duo Lumiere. And this is very, very highlighting. So I'm just going to do a little swatch. If you go really lightly with it, it's actually it's actually really beautiful. I just go very lightly though and then buff it out. But I do think this is a really lovely highlighter. This also goes really lovely on the eyes as well. Now Chanel also came out with the oversized powders. I got in pearly white and the other one in Precious Coral. Now, out of the two, I probably prefer the Precious Coral, and I got this in the Pearls Embossing. It's just absolutely beautiful, and I tend to just use this as a blush on its own. You can use it for highlighting. It even goes beautifully on the eyes, but as a blush just by itself, I think it is gorgeous. Now, the other one, the one Pearly White, that tends to have, it's more sparkly, and has more fallout. I did use this the other day and I used it on my eyes. So if you bought this and you think there's a little bit too much fallout or it's a little bit too bright as a highlight for you, then you can definitely use this on your eyes. So I got this, as you can see, in the chains design. Absolutely gorgeous. I'll just turn it that way so it doesn't reflect too much in the light really really beautiful and as i was saying not only as a highlight but it also it also sort of works almost as a topper 
over eyeshadow so if you've got this give it a try over some eyeshadow as well i think you'll be pleasantly surprised it does look really beautiful and towards the end of last year chanel came out with a sublimage lumiere and i think this is beautiful this is limited edition i'm not still sure whether it is available if it is i will link it below i've used this quite a lot you can be quite generous with this and it doesn't look over the top this is a very subtle highlight so it's not like those other ones i just showed you the oversized one in the pearly white where you're going to shine and have moonbeams or the christmas one the duo lumiere this is much more subtle and i just think it is gorgeous so i'm going to pop that on today just over the high points you can also put this under a blush as well and that looks really beautiful if you get a little bit carried away it doesn't matter it doesn't emphasize the texture it is like i said it's a very subtle highlight but i think it catches the light just beautifully it is super flattering on my mature skin so just the excess you can really just <laughs> put this anywhere you want to and it just gives that little bit of that light it's not too much i don't find it's not chunky in any way it does have that sublimage fragrance just so that you know like most chanel products do have a fragrance in them but i think it is beautiful and it is definitely a highlight that i do reach for a lot i think it is absolutely gorgeous Chanel also came out with also the Rouge Allure, the Velvet. So I picked up a few of these lipsticks that are in the pop-up. This is the one. This is number 60 in Temporel. And I'll do a swatch of that on the back of my hand. So this one is it's just a neutral. It is fairly beige if it's got any pink in it it is the slightest amount it looks quite dark on my lips when i put this on i either reach for one of those dior edit lip maximizers just to lighten it a bit or i go for this this is the rouge coco gloss and i have quite a few of these this is just a really light shade and it just lifts the lipstick a little bit just the shade now another thing that's been around for a long time and I hadn't tried it and it is the shade it's the Chanel Rouge Coco 402 and this is the one Adrian and I often pop this in my bag when I'm going out this is a beautiful shade you can see I blended that one out now but you can see that this just has that little bit of a pink in it and because I reach for this so much and I know it wasn't a new release last year or anything like that but it's definitely become one of my favorite lipsticks so that's the one that I'm going to put on today and finally to top it all off I'm going to use a Chanel fragrance this is the Chanel Chance and this is the Eau Fraiche they came in these little packs towards Christmas time last year. Again, I will link it below if they are still available. It has a twist up top. I think these are a great price point. I said last year they would make a great gift, but also something for you as well. And just really handy just to pop in your handbag. I love this fragrance. It is crisp and it is fresh. Absolutely gorgeous. So here is the finished look and I think altogether it looks really beautiful. My hair is moving around a bit because of the fan but as I was saying that fan is a godsend. It really does keep me a lot cooler and I don't know why I didn't buy one the other two summers. Instead, when it was in the hottest months here in New Zealand, I just used to suffer in this room and I would be really sweating where is when I have the fan going. Hopefully you can't hear it too much, but it makes a big difference during filming. Really beautiful look. Chanel did release 
gorgeous, gorgeous products last year. And now they've just released the La Beiges, the Winter Glow. I hope to be getting that really soon. I picked up a lot from that collection. So I will be doing a video in the near future. And they also released a one-off sort of quad and eyeliner. And I think it's a take on, it's a soft, smoky eye. And I hope to be getting that quad soon as well but overall i was really impressed with the chanel products last year i am thrilled to have them all in my collection i'm actually going to get another set of i have ikea alex drawers and i need to separate out my chanel makeup even more it's starting to get a bit jammed in the drawers that i have so really i'd like to just have one ikea alex draw the nine drawer and dedicate that to chanel and dior they tend to be the most luxury products that i buy i also want to do a best of dior for 2023 as well now i didn't pack up everything that dior released last year but i still wouldn't mind just doing a dedicated video on that and then i also would like to if i get time just doing a video on the best of the rest that i picked up during last year as well so that's it for today's video. I would love it if you gave it a like and subscribed and I will see you next time. Bye.